What is up and welcome to another episode of Tiger Pickums. My name is Lucas Parrish and I am your host and today I am joined by Darnell Tabor and Grant Green. How are y'all doing? Good. A little upset. An episode didn't air last week so I'm doing good so far. Absolutely. What's, what's going on Darnell? How's, uh, how's life? Uh, I'm doing great honestly. Yeah. Just love just here to talk some football. Yeah absolutely. We got a lot of great great games to get to. Unfortunately Mizzou's game has been canceled due to positive COVID issues on the team, but we still have some great SEC matchups to talk about. First, we will touch on Vanderbilt at Kentucky, then Arkansas at number six, Florida, and finally, South Carolina at Ole Miss. So sit back, relax, grab a snack, and enjoy the show. So our first game of the week, we have um, Vanderbilt. They travel to Kentucky, and they have really had a tough season as they haven't won a game all year. Um, they struggle to pass as Ken Sills, their quarterback, has really struggled. He's thrown about six touchdowns, eight interceptions, so not a good ratio, but the completion percentage is good at 67.1. Um, but Kentucky, they've, been, they've had a rough season, but they have picked up two good wins at Tennessee um, against the number 18th ranked uh, team. And they have uh, they had a really impressive win, twenty four to two at Mississippi State. So um, that's a really great team. But honestly, we we kind of we kind of know where this one is going. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I really love Terry, um, their quarterback, um, Terry Lawrence. I really love their quarterback. Um, he's like he's he's a great passer, really efficient. Um, doesn't throw much, but he is a great part of their ground game, and I really love that about them. Yeah. Absolutely. So what, what do you have for a score for us, Darnell? Um, a score for us? Um, I have Kentucky really taking this one away, um, 24 to 3. Really? 24 to 3? Wow, that's quite the... I, I mean, I've got a little bit of a disparity. How do you think Kentucky's going to put up 24 points? Their offense has looked really shaky recently. In fact, I don't know if they put up more than 24 points in any game this season. Yeah, but Vanderbilt is just terrible on defense. They actually allow 35 points a game, so... And then I think Kentucky can really get into the running game because that's what they can do really, really well. Um, so I think they'll just clip this weekend and really, you know, put the hurting on. Absolutely. I, I agree with you. I do not think Vanderbilt will score many points. I have them only putting up seven. I have Kentucky taking this one 17 to seven for all the reasons you mentioned. Vanderbilt is just not a good team. We're, we're talking about them this week because we haven't talked about them yet. We haven't talked about them yet because they're not good and they're not exciting. I, I think when I mentioned to the guys, you know, backstage and, and behind the scenes here that we were talking about Vanderbilt, they're like, why? <laughs> and it's because Vanderbilt just hasn't been great. Grant, what do you have for a score for this um, one? Yeah, I mean, he mentioned it. Vanderbilt's got a terrible defense. Uh, Kentucky's got a solid defense. I think that, you know, keeps Vanderbilt really low. But So I think it's really low scoring. Kentucky's going to win it like something 2013. Yeah. Maybe a little bit worse for Vanderbilt. I'm not sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can't agree more with both of you. The Arkansas Razorbacks travel to Gainesville, Florida to take on the sixth-ranked Florida Gators. Arkansas comes in this game at 3-3 three and three after taking care of Tennessee at home in a low-scoring effort. And for the Florida Gators side, they're doing ever be ever even better. They come in this game 4-1 and one after being their biggest rival, the Georgia Bulldogs, for the first time since 2016. Last week, Felipe Franks looked great for the Razorbacks. Not the flashiest stats, 18-24, 215 yards and three touchdowns. But he got the job done. Down 13-0 early in the third, he led the team to 24, answer, 24 unanswered points. Continued offense production from guys like Traylon Smith in the backfield. Traylon Burks, a receiver, will be needed. Against that, but against that Florida offense, it's the defense that will have to step up. Six in points, eight in yards. And as far as the Florida Gators side, it's just a matter of being consistent. It's just a matter of having that defense step up a little bit. But we saw what the Florida offense did at the Georgia defense. And so as long they got the weapons, they got Darius Tony, all those guys, um, Kyle Pitts we play. So I, I have confidence in Florida. I think they'll I think it will be a good game for about maybe like a half or three quarters. But I think Florida just pulls away with this. 
and high scoring effort, something like 40 to 28. Yeah, I think that's a, a solid score prediction. I also have a high scoring game. I've got it at 38 31, Florida as well. I think Arkansas stays in this. Now, granted, we have seen Florida's defense recently play better against Mizzou. They held Mizzou to not very many points and, and kind of beat them pretty bad. Arkansas, I think, is on a similar tier with Mizzou, maybe even a little bit better this season. We'll obviously see when they play each other, but Felipe Franks has been playing well. He's had quite the season. They have managed to get into the 30s a few times, so I think against this Florida defense, they absolutely can do it. 38-31 is my final score. Um, so my score prediction, it isn't as close as um, you guys' uh, prediction, but I have Florida taking this one 42-21. Like, as we mentioned, they have an explosive offense, but um, I think the defense will step up this week. I just have a good feeling about this one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they did against Mizzou. Yeah. <laughs> For sure, now on to our final game, South Carolina at Ole Miss. Starting with South Carolina, quarterback Colin Hill has been anything but spectacular this season. 58.8% completion percentage, 1142 passing yards, five touchdowns, five interceptions. That's going to need to be better. Running back Kevin Harris, on the other hand, has been spectacular. 106 attempts, 574 yards, 5.4 yards per carry, and eight touchdowns. They do have a solid wide receiver there in Chief Smith. 43 receptions, 479 yards, and three touchdowns. Smith. That is just about as much as he's had in previous seasons, and we're only halfway through this one. Their defense, on the other hand, has not been good enough. They have 423.8 yards allowed per game to 340.5 yards per game that they have gotten. 33 points allowed per game to 24.8 points per game. That obviously has to get better if a 2-4 and four South Carolina wants to improve. The key to the game for them is absolutely going to be their offense. They just they have to stay with this Ole Miss team, this Ole Miss offense that is so high-powered, and it's high-powered because of quarterback Matt Corral, 72% completion percentage, 1,846 yards, 18 touchdowns to nine interceptions. He may be the most surprising quarterback in the SEC this season. Their running back committee of Jerion Ely and Snoop Connor have been good. Ely getting the majority of the attempts, though, 100 attempts, 524 yards, and six touchdowns, that's 5.2 yards per carry. So Ely has been very efficient, and they're stud. Wide receiver Elijah Moore, he has put himself firmly in the draft conversation. He may even go, he may have even put himself day two. You're looking, I think, round three-ish for Elijah Moore, most likely. 61 receptions, 829 yards, six touchdowns, still a lot of games to go. Elijah Moore is absolutely cementing himself as a top wide receiver in the SEC. Their defense is also bad. <laughs> but the difference is their offense can make up for it. Their defense allows 533 and a half yards per game, but their offense gets 541 yards per game. So slightly better. Their defense allows 40.7 points per game, but their offense gets 38 points per game. Those margins are much closer than Ole Miss. The key to the game here again is the offense. Their defense is not going to get better. And honestly, they don't need to be that great to beat South Carolina. I think Ole Miss will absolutely take this one, and I think it'll be high scoring. I have it going 42 to 30, Ole Miss. So in this game, this week, uh, much as to Lucas's points, um, I have Ole Miss taking this one 49 to 35, because what can't they do offensively? Yeah, absolutely. So, and then their defense doesn't need to be that good, because <laughs> 35 points, that's a lot of points to give up, but if you can put up way more than that, I think you can win, so I have Ole Miss. I mean, as we've seen with some teams, and not only, I mean, college football, it's more common, but even in the NFL, you had the 2018 Chiefs yeah. who won every game 40 to 35. It doesn't matter if you give up 35 points if you can put up 40 every game. So, no, Ole Miss hasn't had a good defense all season. They're not going to have one this week, but they won't need to. Yeah, and, I mean, it's really about what Ole Miss does. I mean, Ole Miss has to be the most polar team in college oh, yeah. football. <laughs> I mean, like, La dead last in like defense for his SEC terms, and but yet their offense like top two, top three. Oh yeah, they're up there. It, I think Matt Coral, you know, he's had shown signs of inconsistency, but when he's on, he's on. So I do agree. I mean, South Carolina is not the toughest test in the world as long as Matt Coral Matt Coral puts together a decent game. Ole Miss should feel comfortable, especially at home. And so I don't know about like. 40s, but I feel like 35-17 sounds like a reasonable score for me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it really depends a lot on how Colin Hill plays. Again, he hasn't been very spectacular, but let's see how he goes, how he does against what could be the worst defense in the SEC. And typically, that that typically means a solid defense or, or not a horrible defense, but the SEC is looking a lot like the Big 12 this year. Not a lot of good defenses. So, absolutely, that's going to be a fun game to watch. The game that I'm most excited to watch is absolutely Arkansas-Florida. I think they could make that one close.
Thank you all for joining us this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. Special thanks to my guests today. I always love having y'all on. For Darnell Tabor and Grant Green, I'm Lucas Parrish. Have a great day.